Hello, I'm Helene Oberman, Managing Director of Interior Design Magazine, and I'd like to welcome you to Product Live. This is our series that delves into the products and trends, grabbing the industry, and in real time, look at the minds behind the design. So it began with a mission to reverse global warming. They stopped seeing carbon as the enemy and began to use it as a resource. Taking its cue from nature, Interface has learned to work with carbon, using it as a building block to engineer better products. And now, with the goal to make products with the lowest carbon footprint possible, Interface is designing products that go well beyond neutral in order to restore the health of the planet. With me today to discuss Interface's product innovation to reduce their carbon footprint is Carrie Pei, Vice President of Global Design, and Lisa Conway, Vice President of Sustainability for the Americas. Welcome, ladies. It's so lovely to have you on today's program. Hello. So, Diving right in. So with your Mission Zero Challenge now met, congratulations. You have set up a new commitment for Enerface to reverse global warming with climate take back and for the company to be carbon negative by the year 2040. So Lisa, can you go and explain what this new goal entails for Enerface? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when we were nearing the end of Mission Zero, we started to think about what is Interface uniquely positioned to solve as far as a global world problem goes? And what we realized with the help of our Eco Dream team, including Paul Hawken and um, our long history of lowering carbon emissions um, associated with creating our products, is that what the world really needs now is the reversal of global warming. And this is not just about, quote unquote, the environment or um, polar bears. This is about restoring the health of our ecosystem, um, including to benefit us. So what it means for us is that we're not just looking at zero as a goal. We're actually looking at negative as a goal. And negative is kind of a strange thing um, term to use, especially in design. Um, but negative is a positive thing. That's the biggest thing to remember. Uh, the negative is actually a measurement, and it's a measurement of um, storage of carbon in a product, um, especially because they're uh, plant-based and absorb that CO2 from the atmosphere. So we're really excited about what this can mean for our company and then also what it can mean in terms of a product, which is what makes it really real for people. So really, how did you guys decide upon this approach to take to carbon negativity? Yeah, I mean, most of, most of our listeners probably know that Interface has been on Mission Zero since 1994. So that was all about us eliminating any negative impact our company had on the environment by the year 2020. We declared success on that last year but prior to the end of that mission, we started to think about what's next for Interface. You know, we're not a brand that rests on our laurels. And we wanted to think about what we were uniquely positioned to really give the world. Um, we're not a huge company. A lot of the work that we do and the measurable, measurable impact that we have is through our ripple effect, um, through our brand reputation and getting others to do these large things. Um, so what we started to land on was actually the reversal of global warming. So no big deal, you know. Um, we, love, we love a good mission that sounds impossible. It's exactly what Mission Zero um, felt like when we set that back in 1994. And, you know, it really started to put our innovation team in a different place. We're no longer um, aiming for zero negative impact. We're now aiming for positive impact which is actually measured as carbon negativity. So a little bit confusing. Carbon negative is climate positive. So that's really the way to think about it because there's a lot more of this jargon that's out there. And um, what happened for us is we launched our mission of climate take back in 2016. In 2017, we developed a prototype carpet tile that was in fact carbon negative. So if you remember just the number six out there generally, this, the carbon impact of that carpet tile was negative two. So it actually uh, showed that we could store more carbon in a product than having been released um, through its creation. And um, then we started to commercialize the backing. And here we are um, this month, it's now October, 
And we'll be launching um, both our Sequest backing platform, which is carbon negative backings, and then also three products um, that Carrie has designed that are actually carbon negative in their totality. So the face and the backing, the whole product. So super exciting and also luckily super beautiful because no one would specify them if they weren't gorgeous. <laughs> Well, speaking of the collection, so obviously staying true to your sustainability mission and really to your need to uphold design, performance, and beauty, you are launching a new collection, Apropos Embodied Beauty, which is directly aligned with your goal of carbon negativity. So Lisa and our Carrie is a good time sort of to jump in and tell us a little bit more about the launch of this new collection. I'll hand it to Carrie. She's been behind the scenes of designing this beauty. <laughs> Well, the collection consists of uh, six products and, or excuse me, seven products. Four of them are carbon neutral and three of them are carbon negative. And so when we were first given the task to design a collection that's carbon negative, it became really important to me that we marry the aesthetics of the product with the mission that we were, we were set out to achieve. And so we look to the culture that one would associate with um, sustainability, with renewal, with um, zero waste. And so we looked at some of uh, the things that were coming out of Japan in terms of, you know, uh, the craft and the textiles and their dedication to reusing materials and giving them a new life. You know, when something's broken, they solder it together and they call it the kintsugi and it's incredibly beautiful. If a textile is torn, instead of throwing it away, they give it a stitching pattern and give it a new life and call that sashiko. So this seemed like the perfect marriage between us doing something to renew the earth and our atmosphere and putting together a product line that said things can be beautiful a second time around. With um, Embodied Beauty, we have the four carbon neutral products, which are pretty plush, especially compared to the car carbon negative products because the carbon negative products, in order for it to be carbon negative at the time, we realized that the face weight had to be a certain ounce and um, the uh, stitching and the um, yarns that we used, the machine that we used, these were all new techniques, new constructions, new, new yarns, new machine, everything was brand new to create something that didn't exist in the world. And when they're paired with the plusher fabrics, it really creates a wonderful landscape of textures across the floor. So there is a purpose to not just having carbon negativity, but also that aesthetic that enables to have a broader uh, palette of ways for people to use the floor for wayfinding and for designating six foot distances per se. Well, I would love to find out from the two of you actually how you guys um, centered on the name of Embodied Beauty and what that actually means. I love the name Embodied Beauty because it's almost like I got my word and Carrie got hers. <laughs> it's almost like this perfect um, interweaving of sustainability and design um, because I talk about, you know, embodied carbon all the time. You know, it's, it's a big part of what our brand stands for. We co-founded an external collaboration around um, embodied carbon. But, you know, we say all the time that if, if it's not beautiful, people won't use it. You know, it, they won't specify it. I don't get that excited about all of the names of our products, but I really love this one. And I think it marks a moment in time for us where all of our collections going forward will have embodied beauty, um, even to a more extreme level than they have in the past. So it's pretty cool. We keep on touching on these like three carbon negative designs, but can you actually sort of name them and sort of describe what yeah. each of them are like? Yes, yeah, so carbon, uh, so Tokyo Texture 
and Sishu Stitch and Zen Stitch are the names of the three carbon negative products. And so Tokyo Texture is just beautiful all over texture. It's just very organic looking. It can be, it can go in any place. It can complement any carpet at all. It's your wardrobe basic. And Shishu Stitch has a companion in the carbon neutral product. Sashiko Stitch is the companion. Both are the same pattern, but because they're run on two different machines, they have a slightly different aesthetic. You know, one is more plush, the other one's flat. And um, the color, because the yarns are also different yarns used for the different products, carbon neutral and carbon negative, the colors aren't exactly like, but they're paired together. And I think that this is really better, that you get a little bit more of a broader, you know, a fuller sentence, if you will, in, in putting the carpets together because they're not so matchy-matchy. Mm -hmm. They expand in tone. And then similarly, Zen Stitch has a pair of vintage kimono also in the carbon neutral. So then we have Geisha Gather. So Geisha Gather is the plushest of the carbon neutral products. And Geisha Gather was inspired by the kimono. And the kimono is like it's pencil, pencil straight. Uh, it's, you know, in its construction, it's meant to be as straight as possible. So we kind of took a cue from that. And then also the Obi stash that's in the back, how it folds into a box in the back of the kimono. And we took the approach to make the plank itself the design element. Rather than putting a pattern across the plank, the plank with this sort of sash and you put it together across the floor with other planks creates the pattern. And it's, it's what we're borrowing also from another Japanese term of wabi-sabi, which is to embrace the imperfect. You know, you don't control the floor so much and the design of the floor so much. You allow for that little something, something, that little imperfection to give that je ne sais quoi. Well, it's interesting because there's one term that I um, know that was sort of maybe the meaning and the thought process, which you haven't touched on, which is, mm -hmm. is it Ikigai? Ikigai. Ikigai. Yeah. So what yeah. is Ikigai? Ikigai, I love that term. I love that word. It's not even a term. It's a one word that encompasses a whole meaning for, for having a purpose. With this carbon negative journey that we are going on and we are hoping others follow, we really, you know, really want to change the world and to change the way that other manufacturers think about their products. This is our ikigai. This is our purpose. And so that ikigai embodies really the whole idea of embodied beauty, the Japanese crafts to be our, our, our inspiration and, you know, envelop it with our sustainability mission. So Kiri, I know you kind of like gave a big overview. So of the collection, there's the three carbon negative, and then there's the complementary for um, carbon neutral styles. But actually, Lisa, I want to bring you back into the conversation because really just both for myself and the audience, it might actually be good to give um, everyone an understanding the difference between what a carbon negative and a carbon neutral carpet tile means. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's so much carbon conversation out there now, even in our consumer lives, um, climate pledges, and we're seeing a lot more commercials from tech companies and all of that. So um, it's great to really understand the difference. So um, carbon neutral means that um, just as many uh, carbon emissions have been pulled down from the atmosphere as have been put up. So it basically nets out as a math equation um, to zero. So the way that Interface handles that is we, I, I often joke, we've been lowering the carbon footprint of our, of our carpet tile for 25 years and no one has cared. <laughs> I mean, some people did, but it wasn't really part of the specification process. Um, we're seeing a lot more attention being paid to that now. I think that people feel 
um, and interior designers are getting more engaged in the conversation. It's not just a, you know, an architect or an engineer's job to save the carbon impact of buildings. Um, so basically, we have lowered the embodied carbon or the amount of carbon emissions associated with making the product. Um, we have lowered that as much as possible, and then we purchase offsets to get to zero. Um, that is kind of like what we can do today to get to zero as we continue to work towards getting all of our products to carbon negative. We're starting with only three styles, but what we've shown is that it's possible for us to create the product that our customers love to specify, um, and we're making that carbon negative, which again is a positive thing. So that's kind of the difference. Uh, most of what you'll hear about out there that's carbon neutral today um, has done it with offsets. Hopefully that manufacturer has also reduced the carbon footprint first so that they don't have to buy a lot of offsets or buy their way to neutral. Um, we are buying you know, less and less every year as we work on these innovations um, that get us to um, even lower carbon footprint and then carbon negative products as well. So even our general portfolio is reducing by about a third um, with the launch of these Sequest backings. And then we have these few products that actually get below zero. Well, and then so it's actually, sense. no, absolutely. And I yeah. think we need to educate, you know, yeah. the audience um, about the differences. And, you know, you kind of, Lisa had mentioned it earlier that negative actually is a positive thing. Yes. And so for people to understand that when they hear yes. it, because obviously our minds go in the opposite. I know. So negative out there is a positive for everybody. And it's great because while you say you just have these three products now, it sounds like you're already well on your way to launching additions to it. So this is only the first of three. Let's get That's that right. in front um, of our audience. But you know, Embodied Beauty certainly lives up to its name and shows that beautiful design and sustainability are inseparable. So with that, I'm sorry, our like our time was short today, but I wanna to say to both you, Lisa, and to Carrie, thank you so much for your time and certainly for your insight. And for our audience at home, please make sure to check out the Interface website to learn more about Embodied Beauty and Climate Take Back.